and welcome everybody, I'm Christian from Berlin. We have a lot to do today, so let's be quick. If you're into gospel piano, you also must watch my other gospel piano tutorial, which is linked in the description box. Um, these chords are great to improvise bluesy to. Wonderful. If you're into that, uh, we do that on my Patreon site, so if you enjoy that kind, come and join me. Sounds fantastic. So, uh, what else? If you enjoy this, leave a like, helps my channel to grow. Hope you enjoy this. Let's go. Okay, let's see what we have. We go first step by step. We start on C. It's the first chord, it's the C major seven chord. Then the next is the four, this is the one of course. Then we have the four, F major seven. Then we have the seven from, from C as a half diminished chord. You see that in the, in the display. Uh, B minor 7 flat 5, which is the birth name of half diminished. It's the same. And then we do the E7. Clear, huh? Then we have the A minor 7. Then we have the D7. And now we have the... Now this you can interpret in uh, uh, two ways. Now let have a look at the um, display and you see the small print there uh, right at the bottom that says F major 7 with a G in the bass and that's what you remember because it's easier than remembering G7 9 sus 4 and the 13. Okay so remember this as the F major 7 and with a G in the bass. And now let's repeat this together. It's really beautiful. Um, uh, first in basic position or the chords, C major seven, one and two. F major seven. B half diminished. E seven. A minor seven. D seven. And then the F major with the G in the bass and back to C. And if you want then we can we can put the G the dominant in the end as a turnaround. So now we have the gospel chords, but how can we make the whole thing sound gospelly? And uh, uh, first we have to Talk about voicings, honey. Honey, sit down, we have to talk. You should do that, you know, take your partner, sit, sit down, please, we have to talk about voicings. And some tricks. And we start with the voicings and we start with the uh, major voicings here. And there is uh, plenty of possibilities. There are plenty of possibilities to play the major chords and gospel -y means fat. You can do a lot. Uh, just look at this. Uh, let's say, <laughs> yeah, this just to frighten you away. 
to scare you to uh, leave this uh, video. No, stay with me. Uh, we have the C major chord. So we start with the tender voicings um, and just listen to this bit. Oh, already. Here, in this case, um, we don't make it fat. So now we have the gospel chords, but how can we play these gospel chords gospelly? Uh, we start with voicings. Honey, sit down, we have to talk. Try that at home. Sit down and she gets a heartache, heart attack, and they say, about voicings. Okay, and a couple of tricks. We start with the voicings. And we start with the two major voicings, the C major and the F major. And we start, uh, we can do them either fatter or tender. We start with tender and then as we in real life, we get fat. Look at this. Sounds very nice already if we play that with a, a few voices. And let's have a look what we do. You see, we can drop uh, voice, uh, voices in the chord. And you see, we have the major here, and that sounds really nice. And you can just, uh, whoo, you can just uh, play inversions of this. And you just go on with this, like F major here. Major seven can be doubled as opposed to jazz voicing, where we are trying to avoid doublings because it, it, we want that to sound complex jazz nerds, so why waste fingers on doubling voices? Here, uh, sorry, F major, major seven is doubled here, we have the major third, we can easily drop the um, five. If we drop the major third, it doesn't sound nearly as good. Look at this. Uh -uh. Ah, you see, we rather drop the five than the third. Very nice. So already you can play this. Oh, and then this is half diminished, of course. I look a little bit ahead already. Half diminished with the uh, flat five here. And we have the E7, just really basic. And again, you see, we have the seven doubled. You see, a lot of dubbing. Now we could also, and there is a lot of stuff uh, can go on. Like for example, uh, first we can of course get the uh, left hand a little bit lower and play this bit. You know, listen to this. Oh, whoa, 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 Richard, Richard. Yeah, now we have fattened the whole thing. Um, if you cannot play the uh, tenth, but it's played a lot. It, uh, my, even my voice breaks so um, so often it is played. So, you know, like... Uh, then if you cannot play this, you just play the octave. Or, as my old piano teacher, she had uh, small hands also, she would also... And that's what many do also. With a paddle, you cheat a little bit. It's the best way of cheating. It's, it's not dangerous if you cheat with the left hand. Don't cheat on your wife husband cheat with the left hand okay so we could do then and then this very often done playing uh, with the ninth having the clash between the ninth and the third this is a typical um, uh, gospel and uh, what's this other thing called that's related um, pr uh, uh, um, prayer music no there's a different name it's closely related um, uh, I remember a little bit later yeah does it sound familiar? Yes. Yeah, you see, we have a lot of these ninth and the uh, major third played with the octave. Ah, what was it called? What's that called, that piano style? Um, ah, you know that if you can find something and it's on the tip of your tongue, sometimes happens with the name of my own brother. I'm getting old. And you can also play the fifth year. Everything, there's a lot possible, you know? Even this. You see, again, we have this sound, this heart melting sound between the ninth and the third. And you can really freely try. You can play the tender one here, but with the ten, it doesn't really matter. 
or here. Or the, I think it's called the power grip. Somebody called it the power grip somewhere. Here. This one and then you play. You see? Quite a fat chord, huh? And we already also add uh, a fourth note to the uh, to these, so we have the minor seven, uh, root, minor third, and flat five. Okay, and uh, it's up to you. It's really, I just give you um, uh, inspiration. Also, this look at this F with the six. Okay, that's not necessary for now, but here. Just a ninth here with the seven. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't tell me that doesn't sound divine. Okay, well, let's move on. Um, uh, and uh, with the uh, half diminished, uh, you know this already. Than the e, uh, e7 clubs. <clears throat> Before we talk about the e7, now comes the first trick. First trick is we play C. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, huh? There are a couple of there were a couple of tricks in there already. Let's have a look. We go from the F major seven. And now listen to this. You're familiar huh, with that sound. You know it from somewhere. You just never knew what it is. And we're going from the F major. We grab the F, the major third of F, and we have here already. You know, we are on F. And now you stay here with the root of F. That goes. The root goes. Hey, just white keys. And we are on the target note, the B half diminished. And here we grab the third. And we have this third going down. Beautiful, huh? And it's a very idiomatic, very typical gospel thing for slow gospel. So we were here. You played out however you, you see anything is possible. Here. Now play the fifth. Play this voicing here. Quite rich. And now. We are now in B half diminished. And now look at what I did here. What is that? What comes to your mind? Have a look at the display. It, it tells you something. It tells you it's this thing, this ugly sign. It's not a hashtag. It looks like a hashtag, but it's not. It says the uh, sharp five. Here, that's this one. Yeah, the chord is A7, but we can do something with the fifth as always. Uh, and look at the E7 in the display becomes a sharp five, okay? So it's the altered, you can also all call it the altered five. If I leave out the seven, it will tell me it's an altered chord. Look, I, I dropped the seven. Augmented, augmented, yeah. I think it means the same roughly. One is Greek, the other is ancient Australian. Okay. Now, okay, we were here. Chord, and now, oh, 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 that is so, Beautiful. And now, and here I, uh, I stop briefly on the A minor. We are on the A minor seven, ladies and gentlemen, and we have uh, this chord. Well, hey, that's weird. Look at the display. It doesn't a, say A minor seven, but now we are in gospel territory, and we have it's basically the of A minor seven. It's the seven, the nine, and the four of A. One, two, three, four. Here. Oh, great, it's full of tension. We don't even play the third. Let's have a look again and then you can best remember it as the G with the A in the bass, but don't forget it's the A minor seven. Um, and you can at any uh, uh, moment resolve this to the, um, to the A minor seven. 
again. You can also go straight into the A minor. You don't have to play the speciality, but it sounds great. It's very gospel -y. So again, we were, again, we were here. And then D7. From the A7, so you saw already I did something on top of the E of the of the E7 augmented here. Here, which is this. What was that? Let's have a look. We played that before. Like this, okay? You with me? Yeah, and now. Now I add the octave here. Can you play the thumb here and get the span here, right? Otherwise, grow up or make at least your, your hand grow. Put your hand in water, in soaked water overnight and it will like get all spongy and you, then you can um, pull, pull the fingers and become longer. One night in, uh, in warm water with uh, soap. Okay, th then you can play this. Wow, it, look at my left hand. fourth finger and we lead via the third of E to the A minor. That's beautiful. All these are just uh, suggestions. Now, whoa, we have another little lead down. We're going from A, we want to reach the third of the upcoming D7. So what we do is, oh nice. And then, this is again a total, a tense chord. A ten, can you say so? It's full of tension. Look what the display says. And now, look at the small print on the display. Um, the small print and the, the lower line of the small print. It says F major 7 um, with a G in the bass. And this is uh, our additional interpretations of the chord. You can either call um, this the 7, 9, sus 4, and the 13, and then it, uh, it uh, says to us uh, the G13, sus 4. But far easier it is to remember if you say it's an F major 7 over G. Uh, many of this stuff today you learn already in my other gospel piano tutorial. It's linked, um, so uh, some might know this trick already. So beautiful tense chord, you know? Of course you can also play here. Or G sus. There are many possibilities. But here or on the G7, you know, when you, you play this and now you play this. Ha! That was a mistake. Okay. And it's the, the embellishment. I also teach that in my other tutorial. Okay, we have the G7 to the G sus. And now you play this uh, um, um, arpeggio, just between the G, sus4, 5, and now it's repeating. And then, yeah, and then, of course it's repeating, it's easy. Uh, down doesn't sound so good. Yeah, okay, now we have one, uh, one chorus, and you see, a l a l <laughs> Christian, what do you see? What did you want to say? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, a couple of tricks, the right voicings, and a little bit of energy. You know, when you play here. Now. Yeah, here you play defined. And now. Here it was something. I did not explain to you. Okay. Now look. Ah, typical, um, typical gospel trick. Approaching the target note in octaves, sometimes not octaves, just single notes, but um, here from the bottom, chromatically. Also here we approach the target note from the bottom. Very nice sound. It's a little 
little bit for advanced, but that's where you want to go. We don't even talk about slip notes. You can, of course, do a lot of uh, slip notes, but it will go too far. Now, okay, there's one more deadly trick. And no, it's of course a heavenly trick. See if you can spot it. What was it? Yeah, you're right. Did you spot it? Well done. Now listen to this again in slow motion. It, it was there already, here. C, C, now comes what I explained to you, from the F major, to the B half diminished, sorry my brain just had a little blackout, um, we put, what is the dominant, it's now we do reharmonization. That was the word I was looking for. Reharmonization. And before we went from F straight to the B half diminished, righty? Okay, now we um, it's a typical trick to put the dominant of an upcoming chord before that chord. Before that chord. You know that uh, when we from when you want to go from C to A minor. We can also do put the dominant of A minor, which is E7, before the A minor. So listen to this. First time we go, go directly to A minor, and now we do. Yeah? Instead of C, A minor, we do. And it's perfect. You know, we just put the, the dominant of A minor in between. Here we do the same. We, we are F major. <laughs> And we put the dominant of anything B, we are, want to go to B diminished, and dominant would be F sharp 7. And we hit the sharp 9 here of the F7, just because we can. So, can you see the, it's the F sharp 7. Yeah, so I play the major 3rd, the 7. I know you never played that chord, right? Never in your life, and you probably will never ever play it again. So, here you learn it. F7 with the sharp 9 of F. So it's kind of, you know, getting a little bit outside. Wonderful little diversion. Do it once in a while, or every second time, or whatever. So. Or he could... Yeah, that I remember from my early gospel lessons uh, I had. Um, so we play the A minor. And it's a nice way to go from um, A minor 7. You know, we have this. Um, the, remember this on A minor 7? We just make it fatter. Same thing, just the D is doubled. That's why it's called a D, because it's doubled. So, A minor 7 with this uh, gospel voicing and a really tense, vo uh, a beautifully tense voicing. And here we are in G7. You see, the, the whole thing gains even if the, the chords are beautiful. But if you connect the chords with a little bit of melodic motion, they gain even more. Like, I could play, but now listen to this. You see, it's, uh, it becomes a little melody. And this would be your task. Like, uh, just improvise, play. Ah, you see, just a couple of notes. Whatever. Now, okay, we have some time left. 
Um, it sounds, of course, great also with slip notes. Uh, let's do a little bit of that. Yeah. Between the ninth and the major seven, uh, ninth and the major third. Yeah, you know that. Um, already subscribe to my channel. I don't have to repeat my, myself then all the time. C major to F major, practice that a little, just between those uh, those two chords. Yeah, perfect already. Same ornamentation. There's even sheet music, I believe. Yeah, there's sheet music uh, for gospel, where I show you uh, the ornamentations here. It's the same thing we played up um, as a as an arpeggio. We can play that down here. It's just always the same. That makes it so easy here. Wonderful stuff. And um, uh, what is uh, what is there else to say? Uh, I think well, you, there's plenty. Of, of course, we will still with the uh, slip notes. Okay. What was that, Christian? That sounded super divine. We're really taking off here. Hallelujah. So um, here, we, the thing was, we can do slip notes also on the half diminished chord, the B half diminished chord. Now listen to this. Half diminished, and we slip, uh, we slip in a slip note between the four and the flat five. Yeah, wrong bass. Yeah. And we are E seven. not use your knowledge that the coming from the bottom always sounds nice and be creative on you know on your own you see see as I tell, told you anything goes like you can play it or this or this or this or this and now we are you on your own is a Christian ah I understand this coming from the bottom um, like and tie the chords to this or yeah from the bottom the bass line chromatically or diatonically diatonically yeah you can go on don't overdo it but do it often if you can do it so One thing, uh, yeah, I must show you that, although many of you might know that already. Listen to this. Mm. Okay, we are on the E7 now. Look at the display. It shows, shows a sharp 9, sharp 9, and the sharp 5. And we, it's the altered chord. It's the altered chord. And you know the sharp 5 already from before. And now, yeah, you played it like this. And now we play this 7 here. And we want the sharp nine of E, and it's such a magic sound. It's, yeah, I think it's even more magic than the noise coming from the neighbors, what they're doing at night. Nick knack, nick knack, you know what I mean. So, um, this is um, the uh, E7 sharp nine, and it's a beautiful dominant sound to go to. Whoa. And you see here, voicing on the G7 again, the, the 
worship piano. It's called worship piano, gospel and worship piano. And it has a little bit different sound, but very, very related. And there's, they play a lot of this stuff. No, they play a lot of, uh, forget it. Okay, it's called worship piano. So now we have this, it's a lot of stuff, huh? but I want you to be happy. Um, and then you can, well, it's, it's really, it's really a lot. So um, then of course you could try to improvise on it, but I think I put this, <clears throat> uh, will, you know, I, I give you an idea and then I continue with that on, on my Patreon side. It's also incent an incentive. It's not blackmail, come on, it's plenty here. But if you want to improvise with me on this, um, we do that on my Patreon site. It's linked in the description box. So it must be something extra for those. Okay, but uh, to have an idea. It's a major blues scale. Christian, you gotta. That was plenty and I hope um, you enjoyed this lesson. Hopefully see you in my next lesson coming next week. Bye from Berlin.